Namaste and welcome to the first episode of Karnatic Conundrums. Through this series, uh, we really hope to open up discourse within Carnatic music. Um, we will do so by interviewing a variety of people from esteemed vidwans to young and upcoming artists, as well as organizers and resikas. Um, we really hope that through this series, we're able to make Carnatic music more accessible to a larger audience. A little bit about myself, my name is Neha Prashamachadi and I'm a Carnatic violinist. And today I'm incredibly lucky that for the first episode, I'm sitting here with my guru, Vidwan Sri Vitogamurthy. Welcome, sir. <laughs> so, sir doesn't really need an introduction, but just to say a few words, he is one of the most sought after Carnatic violinists in the field today. Um, he is world renowned. Sir has performed almost over 5,000 concerts, I believe. He has uh, over 200 students and through his extended parampara, um, almost 800 more. Sir has accompanied some of the leading vidwans of the older generation and the new generation. He is also a musicologist and has won several awards from reputable sabhas across Chennai. Um, so thank you so much for thank being here with us, sir, today. My pleasure. I really want to get into how you came to be this esteemed vidwan that you are. You have a very interesting background. A lot of Carnatic musicians come from um, musical families, um, settled in Tamil Nadu, be it Chennai, Madurai, um, whatever be it, but you have a very interesting background. You hail from a small village in Karnataka. Can you maybe speak a little to your childhood and how that journey began? Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, I am from Karnataka, a village called Nigle. It is in South Kendra district. And uh, of course our village is a very, very, very remote village. There is uh, no roads connecting to that village and uh, both sides we had two rivers. And in uh, rainy season, the rivers will be full of water and there is no bridge to cross. And we have to go by boat. So it is almost like an island where I studied till my 10th grade with no background of any music or no teachings or, or learning of music. But my mother and my grandfather, grandfather started the violin to me, he is a violinist. And my mother wanted me a musician, wanted to be a musician. So after my 10th grade, she wanted me to go outside of that village and I went to Shimoga and started learning from one of Lalgudi sir's disciples, uh, Sri H. K. Venkatram sir. And I did my commerce graduate graduation there, and then I moved to Chennai. So, um, can you speak a little towards how you ended up in Chennai? I believe Lagri sir discovered you at a competition, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I give, uh, in Shimoga, I got in touch with uh, Vidushish E. Rukmini, who also spoke Kannada because I don't know Tamil, so she told that you can come to Chennai and I can teach you. So I went to Chennai and I was learning from her. And once I played in Krishna Gana Sabha and I won first prize for my junior accompaniment slot. And the prize was given by Lal Gudi sir. And he came there and he asked me to come home. So one Ganesha Chaturthi I went to his house and I played Siddhi Vinayakam. And he told, you can come to me and I can teach you. Then I told my Guruji, T. Rukmini Madam, that Lal Guru Sahasa calling me to come to his house and he wanted me to take it as his disciple. And being Rukmini Madam also a disciple of Lal Guru Sahasa, mm -hmm. she appreciated that and that started. And I had the great fortune of joining Lal Guru Sahasa and get all his blessings and lessons. It's very auspicious that uh, you went to Lal Reeser's house on Ganesh Chaturthi. I think yeah. my first day when I came to you and uh, asked to learn from you, it was actually Vijay Dasmi. Yeah. <laughs> um, maybe going back a little towards your childhood. Uh, so, besides, so I have been to um, Sir's village and like he was saying, even to this day, it's pretty isolated. When we went, uh, there's a main road, but to get to his house, it's really nestled inside a jungle to uh, say the very least. So you have to go through a dirt road and there aren't any neighbors in sight. 
Um, so I can only imagine growing up, it was even more isolated and yeah. you didn't really have a music community, did yeah. you? There's, I, uh, I just, I was playing, I, because I started my violin playing with my grandfather when I was 8th grade. He taught me the basic exercises and uh, that Mohan Ragam and with that, I was playing all the popular Kannada cinema <laughs> songs at that time. But my mother used to teach us vocal music. Then only after going from that village to Shimoga, I started the formal training in my mm. And when you are said that it's a remote village till now, I still remember seeing the tigers from our house <laughs> coming to uh, our cattle shed and taking the cows from the cattle shed. And uh, it was very scary. All the wild animals used to come in the um, near the house mm. in the night times because there was no power in our house. Yeah. So we will close the doors by 7 o'clock when we sleep inside <laughs> and just watch whatever comes there and put the torch light and see and just sit there. And uh, whenever we travel in the jeep to the cities and cross in the forest area, we used to see tigers crossing here yeah, and there. Yes. Nowadays it all, it's all become like a village, modern village I can see. Yeah. So when you are uh first came to Chennai to learn from Valguri sir. Up until that point, you'd only been to Chennai once before for the competition at Prishagana Sabha. Yeah, no, I came and this, it is a concert. So I came and that concert happened only after I came to. Okay. I came to Chennai just to learn from Tirupini Madam and mm -hmm. Valguri sir, yeah. And my uh, uncle was there. So for a basic time, I was staying with him for some time. They supported me and they, um, because they were there, my parents let me go to <laughs> Chennai because I don't know Tamil and I cannot support myself economically. My dad cannot support me much. So, so okay. it, it, that's how it started. Then they moved and some other people like Sri Krishna, they all helped ah, me okay. in uh, giving me an accommodation. Somebody gave me a fan, somebody gave me a cycle <laughs> and all those. So, it's a uh, lot of people helped me. Of course, Lal Guti sir, I was one among the family members of Lal Guti sir, so he not only taught me music, he taught me the, all the life skills I can see. That's great. Um, so, I was going to say for those of our viewers who are not too familiar, so those, um, for the most part who live in Karnataka speak Kannada, sir um, speaks a dialect called Tulu, which is kind of a language of its own. So, coming to Chennai, which even to this day, if you don't know Tamir in Chennai, it's very hard to get around um, from auto drivers ripping you off to people in the store giving you dirty looks and also trying to rip you off. There's no way you can survive and especially sort of being the, you came in the late 80s, 90s? Yeah, late 80s, yes. Yeah, Mid so, 80s I came and I went back to our gram, uh, village because I there was a need of my uh, taking care of the village. So mm -hmm. I went back and Lalguri sir wrote me a letter saying that please come back, Rajkumar Bharati's concert is there, Sanjay Subramanian's concert is there, they were all calling me and uh, I want to fix those concerts. You come back and uh, you have to learn, you, you can become a good violinist if you come and continue the study. So after one and a half years of break again I came back with the, uh, that postcard when he <laughs> brought me and I got the receipt. So it was right. his homesickness of being yeah. an outsider in Chennai. Yeah that kind of drew you back to the village. Yeah, yeah. And homesickness, and it's very difficult to sustain in of Chennai course. with the, as you said, the language barrier and the financial conditions and everything is difficult. And also, my need was there in my village. So, of course. Just uh, agriculture, farming, and so, my grandparents and parents, they also had to continue that farming. Of course. You know? And yeah. I am the only son, so they wanted me to take care of that. So your family well, comes from a farming background. Yeah, Almost yeah. everyone in the surrounding village, they're all yeah, farmers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. it was a very People, big yeah. deal for you to go mm -hmm. to Chennai, the, um, the only son to go and yeah. into this big city from Nile. Yeah, yeah. But mother, my mother dreamt that all, me and all my sisters should only become musicians. And even I got a job in the bank, she told, <laughs> no, no, you should not go for this the job. This is your famous story, you yeah. always say. So you have to take music and... Uh, and in those but, days, yeah, if a you bank cannot job survive, is... yeah, at that day's bank job <laughs> is a very attractive one. Yeah. And if you don't uh, able to survive in music, don't worry. We have some lands, you cultivate here and you can teach somebody. 
so that's why we also after i i was started playing and mm-hmm. uh, started leaving as a professional musician i started going back to the village and uh, doing something for the music you really preempted um, my next question which is oh, okay. did malama mm-hmm. your mother have a vision for you and of her children which yeah. i think she'd be very happy today because not only is sir this huge vidwan all four of his sisters have continued music even his nieces yeah. and nephews and his um both of his children um are musicians so you really come to become this musical family that everyone in chennai thinks of these musical families but you coming from this village have become um an equal if not more than yeah, this family yeah of course definitely it is my mother's vision and our family support and more than that lots of people i can say all my gurus all the gurus of my nieces and my children and everybody and more than that every musician who i accompanied they all loved me and they supported me to do that even today it is music we we have a one very strong family bonding Definitely. with all the musicians so that i think it keeps us going all the time was it um also maybe the youth music community at the time yeah. the 90s were yeah. very special because you saw um all of these young musicians come up and get a uh, prime time slots in sabas which didn't happen before yeah in uh, i remember it is in 1985 i think there is the youth association for classical music it started why you see why acm so vijay shiva and this uh, j balaji and they all the people who started it of course every musician at that time mm-hmm. who were all young musicians and they also introduced me to that uh, uh, ycm and they conducted concerts of all the younger artists i played for saumya in music academy mini hall <laughs> me and nevil nan we played and uh, uh, great star words like uh, yes ramanathan sir dk patam they were all sitting as audience in that concert and that was a great turning point to the um, younger generation younger generation till that people who have lots of experience they used to get the slots in big sabhas but after that they realized that oh this younger generation has lot of potential we have to also um, mm-hmm. give them good opportunities then all these slots were there for the younger generations but the support by the sponsors by the sabhas by the audience everything was uh, maybe doubled more than mm-hmm. several times because of this uh, movement so we have to thank all my uh, i can say colleagues or my contemporary musicians like uh, vijay shiva unni krishnan j balaji sanjay subramaniam and after later years as a team krishna took over that uh, manoj shiva was there and it's still going but that time it helped all the musicians because i think that was a hallmark because yeah. now you have so many organizations they, promoting uh, the thing is this enfield and other companies they all came and they wanted to support musicians by giving a job for their mm. um, livelihood oh, okay. and they gave so santana gopalan sir and ramesh and there is a few mm. emi krishna swami they are all they were all working there just to support themselves in music they were doing music but they were also working there yeah so like that it all uh, this moment happened in that time so i am one of the luckiest artists came to chennai in that time so i had great opportunity of playing to all the younger generation artists who are wonderful friends all these years with me <laughs> and uh, other than that i was also had the opportunity of playing to great stars mm. in very young age it is because of uh, i think the generosity and their uh, uh, greatness it's also a lot of things coming together because like you said it was really important at that time to find a way to sustain yourself in music yeah. because nowadays you have um you know you have income through teaching and a lot of people are on tv or they have you used to have on um, cd and album records but the 90s were very special late 80s especially because that was still coming into fruition so um, that's amazing that you got to live through that and you really seen the music scene evolve yeah it is sweet that that period was really very golden period i can see yeah so um continuing forward you evolved from um coming to chennai without knowing one word of tamil to establishing yourself if you go to ayodhya mandapam and if you see anyone um around that area in chennai carrying a violin they all know that you're going to vitosar's house 
to this day, people have stopped me on the street and asked me, oh, are you going to Victor Sir's house? And I'm like, yes. So he's known as the established Vidwan of, uh, I would say. <laughs> Definitely, sir. So. Um, so now that you've done that, you always said that throughout your musical journey, you felt this need that brought you back to Karimbitu, to Nidle. And one day, 20 years ago, you finally, well, 19 years ago, going on 20, you decided to bring that to fruition, um, give kids like you the opportunity to experience Karnataka music, yeah. and you now conduct a shivira that's extremely successful. Um, can you talk about this music? Sure, then? sure. Actually, we usually, uh, in every year, we go into a village for the summer holidays and mm -hmm. spend some 15 days there. And uh, one of the one or two days we will have our annual puja rituals in the house. So we call the local people to come and sing and uh, like that. And my sister Rajarajeshwari was uh, um, staying nearby village. So she had some students, they used to come. Then one or two years after, what I, we did is we uh, took some artists with us so that we can uh, cherish those days with music. Who are the first artists you took? Uh, actually, Lal sir came and he stayed with us for one week. Wow. All, the, all his students, like Krishnan sir, Bombay Jeshi, Vijay Lakshmi, Lalita Krishnan, everybody was there. Because sir used to also um, yeah. have excursions with his yeah, students, right? With his, so he's, he visited our village several times, uh -huh. but it was the trip where he stayed for a week and it was a rainy season time and we every day we, are, uh, we were walking to the river and we were practicing and all this. Hmm. We still, still take still, the, uh, yeah. the journey to the river. I yeah. had the pleasure of going to Karimbitu myself and we yeah. all um, we were in the river, we yeah. held hands and we sang with Bombay Jai Shri Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he used to, uh, the water flows and he used to tell about the rhythm, how it flows and all this. <laughs> it was still in my memory. So that it started and the first, one of the first music Vidwans we took was Kasturi Ragan. Okay. He came to with us. He came to a nearby village to a concert, mm -hmm. so I took him. And after that, every musician came, like T.M. Krishna, Bombay Jayashi several times, T.M. Krishna several times, Santana Gopal sir, and Saumya, and uh, you named two ways there, right? <laughs> And the doctor and Ramani has come, Velo Ramadan sir. And now, nowadays, Balamurali, Balamurali Krishna, nowadays, Uma Prabhupada Raman, Yam Chandrasekhan sir, Vivi Subramanian sir, and uh, Abhishek Ravram, most of the years. And even Sundaram Mama came this year, right? Year, yes, Sri Sundaram sir came. So, it is, the, and, and again, it is not that we called them and the, it is, they came as their own house and they stayed there and they taught, they taught their life experiences, taught the music to everybody. So, this Karmitra Shibra, whatever we are doing, we just started it as a puja and uh, then it's turned as a, a five-day camp and now it became five days with the 18 hours of music every day. It is only because of the support, I can say, love and affection of the musicians, not support, I can say. They come, they will be with us and whatever small thing we want to offer them, they don't take anything. They just uh, want to do it for, uh, uh, as I say, what the music and uh, the students and their parents, very affectionate the community, village students and their parents. Nowadays, of course, from Bangalore, Mysore, Chennai, and some of them are from the United States. <laughs> they are all participating. And it is a event happening with the support of so many people. Yeah. All my friends uh, join me hands in conducting the festival. One of my friend is, uh, friends is uh, taking care of the food and other things, and like that. But uh, it's a very satisfying thing, I'm, uh, I can say, because... It's very impactful. Yeah, it is uh, like uh, we have created a platform where the students are not from our school. Mm -hmm. The teachers are not our teachers. It is just a platform for a interested music student to learn music from different teachers. So even I will be a student, I will be a teacher in that uh, place, like that. So the students, whoever 200, the students, 225 students attended this year, they are all from different schools learning from different teachers, mm -hmm. not from me. And the teachers who are going to come are from different bodies. It may be Chandrasekharan sir, it may be Vivya sir, it may be Lalmudi sir, it may be Dr. Balamudi Krishna, or it may be any of the younger generation musicians. Like that it is happening. It's just the music. 
and everybody who came there showed their respect to the other co artists and they spoke about the very good things about the other artists and those are the things i think we rarely find in other places which is happening in our place and i think you really make a very big impact on the local community uh the students there because like you said they probably don't get on a daily basis you know access to all these musicians yeah. in chennai if you're living in chennai every day you can go see some big vidwan because someone will be giving a concert and a lot of the times it might even be a free concert but yeah. that's not the case um you know where you're staying in karnataka yeah, and and uh, getting a class from the masters because even the heroes of carnatic music is that to sitting with them and eating with them together and sometimes they serve and we eat and the teaching so from getting the teachings from them and the satisfying thing is every year after the camp is done these children school children they go and perform this small bhajan kriti or whatever we taught in the competitions and they um, call us and tell us that we i got first prize by singing this that so some 150 200 students some 50 students are participating in some competition some place and they are happy that they got some prize by singing these songs and because of the quality of the teachings and many of them look forward every year to this camp oh, yeah. i was the thinking thing is some uh, of yeah right? so i think is first year if uh, <laughs> five student came that five will be there in the next year and then so it just keeps so the, but in 19th year whoever came some of them are uh, from the beginning they are there like that. so everybody want to come sometimes because of the circumstances they are they are not able to make it mm-hmm. and um, you also so now you've trained several teachers and they go out and on behalf of i guess what we can say is little sir's parampara are teaching um local students across karnataka yeah, correct yeah, yeah in the south kendra area we have some five six teachers who started teaching and now nowadays they are also conduct shibiras like this every month they conduct the shibira some violin camps are going on and i teach the student mm-hmm. and they will go to villages and they some camps they do and they nurture the students from that they will pick and choose some students and they bring it to parmitpal or main shibira so like that if you recall maybe have some more than some 800 students <laughs> I think what's um really commendable on the the effort here is that there's no discrimination about background or um be it um socioeconomic background or um, you yeah. know be it religion even or even caste you know you have a variety of students I think so I was saying um you have even Christian and Muslim students yes, attending yes. which is a very rare sight you don't get to see in Chennai yeah. so like you yeah. said it's something magical yeah. about everybody who ever is interested in music they can come and they can participate in the shibira and of course as you said there is no fee for the shibira so mm-hmm. whatever they want to offer they can give or they can just come and enjoy the music and go you have That's several um, rasikas especially the parents who yeah you know it's different to be sitting there day to day and learning but it's another thing to just be so enamored and sitting in the audience yeah. and for like sir said the shibira goes on 18 hours a day sometimes there's throughout the night there sessions in yeah, yeah. because it's the passion of seeing yeah, you would have seen that no the yeah. night they were all singing till midnight and they get up in the form i think abhishek anna yeah. was the one who yeah. he was like no 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 we can keep going we can keep going yeah. so the few years ago i also started another camp like this in another remote village in kerala oh okay it's called mulleri mulleri yeah. i guess from kerala yeah, yeah. yeah. sir's why so mulleria and uh, this year there we had some 85 students there and tm krishna sir came and he uh, performed the last day and he spoke mm-hmm. to the children they also performed very well they are from different teachers uh, learning from different teachers all those teachers joined together and they wanted me to conduct the camp so it was very satisfying sometimes you know with the, being with children and uh, oh, teaching course. them through teaching we can learn a lot and all those so you make such a huge impact on your lives thank you thank you for not only coming here today but thank you for the huge seva you're really doing to carnatic music thank you this shibira is something very unique um you know i've done a lot of research trying to see if anything like this is out there within carnatic music even the indian classical music space what sir does is very unique because he f- fundamentally kind of bridges this gap between students in remote areas who are interested in carnatic music but don't have access to teachers or an extended network and he brings esteemed vidwans people that when i speak spoke to some of these students they were like 
oh, I only in my dreams maybe thought that I could meet Abhishek Anna or Bombay Jai Shri Madam, and here they are sitting 10 feet with them, and they can go up and interact with them. Um, and most of the students, they also come to Chennai now. That's to amazing. To take uh, advanced classes from the uh, teachers, mm -hmm. and they, a few students who took it as a um, full-time um, profession, yeah. uh, they started teaching, they started uh, working in the uh, recording companies and mm -hmm. uh, related to music and they are full-time musicians and all this. They are all from our area. That <laughs> is very uh, hard for me. Too. I think every time I come to Chennai, I see someone new yeah. and I always notice they're speaking Tulu and I'm like, they're from, they're from South Canada yes, and yes. they're one of Sir's students who, against all odds, like Sir himself has really made it. Um, so on a concluding note, throughout this entire uh, conversation, we've talked about how very unexpectedly you came up, you came to Chennai and really made a name for yourself and you even spoke about, um, you know, the time in the 80s where you said it was very special, it was like, um, it was like everything was coming together. So I have to ask you, do you feel destined to do music? Like, this is what you were meant yeah, to do. Definitely. I enjoy doing this and um, I really thank God for uh, being making me a musician, which I like to do and uh, enjoy the process. Uh, usually, Lal Rusar used to say this, uh, music, musician is the only person who will enjoy playing mm -hmm. for and may, gives happiness to others. For this, he is also getting paid. <laughs> it's the only profession where this is. And uh, more than everything, my great asset is my students. Everywhere, if I go to U.S. every Saturday, Sunday, there is some five to ten students are performing in different places, even in India. So they are my greatest strength, and uh, of course, I am very, very fortunate to be a musician. That to be learning from Lalgudi sir, and uh, sometimes I, as you said, sometimes I feel with that village background, how I came to Chennai and how today I am traveling to this very interview. We are doing it in New Jersey today. How uh, all this, the uh, uh, blessings of my parents and gurus and of course the divine power, I think it is happening. And uh, thanks to all my affectionate students <laughs> who always uh, are with me in supporting all my ventures. They're always nagging you on Skype and <laughs> WhatsApp for class. <laughs> thank you for being with us and thank you for being here for the first episode of Karnatic Conundrums. It's my pleasure too and thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you.